I think the police unions are a great buffer because they make sure that you don't just start charging people that are cops or, or are military uh, for domestic violence when maybe there really wasn't even that bad. Like I said, no harm, no foul. No, if they don't die, it doesn't really matter. And so these these unions are able to make sure that they don't um, that they don't just get railroaded and that they're all of their rights are protected, too. You know, they've got extra rights that they need to have as police officers, you know, they need to be able to, um, you know, push the line a little bit. And sometimes they get caught pushing the line and that's when they need the protection because they're doing it for a reason. And again, we're to, you know, I have so much respect for our enforcers because I got other things to do. I don't have the time to go out there and protect this country and they do, and they need to have some leeway and those unions are really able to protect them. Again, they're, they're doing one of the hardest jobs in the country. I know people will say, oh, well, more people die from, you know, collecting the trash or or electric telephone line people or something out there, you know, have dangerous jobs. But no, it's it's the enfor- our enforcers have the most dangerous jobs. You know, they're fighting a war outside their house and inside their house, because I'll tell you what, there are some families out there that don't support the cops that live in their households. And and that's why those cops need to be a little bit more heavy handed and and expect the respect that they deserve. And and again, fortunately, these police unions are able to help with that as well. Help help the courts or or the the department they work for understand that these guys are under a lot of stress. Sometimes they got to blow off some steam. Sometimes steam looks like a smack smacking the old lady around or something and, you know, putting her in her place, making sure that those kids are are doing exactly what they're told and not having the freedom to of choice uh, in the household because these enforcers know what they're doing. Okay. Um, and again, I'm no part of, of what our guest today is saying is necessarily the opinion of this talk show or the network. Well, I'll tell you what ought to be. Well, I understand that that's everyone's your- opinion and that's what we're pushing for at EAA. Everyone needs to be supporting our cops this way. I understand that that that, that is your perception. Um, so you are also a, a big supporter of the government in general, the nation's government. Uh, and the reason I ask that is, as some people know, um, on our show, we do kind of question the status quo and say, hey, um, how necessary is government for society to exist? Might we not be able to have a better society without uh, a government telling us what to do and stealing our money through taxes? Yeah, you know, I mean, again, let's go back to these Indians. There wasn't a government when the Indians were running this place and they were just make, you know, making a mess out of it. They were killing buffalo and and living in tents. And now we've got now we've got, you know, cities, we've got planning, we've got roads and highways, we've got infrastructure. Uh yeah, I mean, we pay some taxes for it, but who cares? I mean, you know, I, if you figure it out, we're I probably when you start looking at all the taxes from all the angles, 70% isn't too much to pay for freedom of every dollar that we make 70 cents on every dollar that we make is not, to, is not too much to pay for freedom and throwing some of that money towards the enforcers is absolutely very important. They, they need to know that, uh, that we support them on every level, including through our money. And as far as our government goes, it ain't going to work any other way. We just got to accept it. There's no other, there's no other way. And yes, yes. I'm libertarian leaning because I don't like, well, there's really not much I don't like about the government, but there's sometimes they'll do something wrong. And and I just don't like that. And that's why I'm a libertarian. But we got to keep voting. We got to keep making sure that uh, we give these enforcers as many rights as we can. And I tell you, that qualified immunity stuff is some of the best stuff out there. And the fact that we can kind of, kind of, hmm make the constitution a little more pliable to support our enforcers and make sure that they're able to, you know, kick doors in just based on, on, on their gut feelings and things like that. That's important because that's, what's going to keep us safe. And the politicians that we elect need to make sure that they blindly support our law enforcement officers too. Okay. Some, some strong opinions. Um, I'm going to read something that I saw on uh, the EAA's uh, social media. Okay, let's hear it. Okay. Uh, 
currently, every single complaint that is filed against an officer winds up stressing the cop out even more. We are fighting for a bill that will allow police unions to pay off people who make accusations and issue apologies to them without the cop even knowing that he had been complained about. And when I read that, I thought, well, is this that kind of ruins the point because then the officer won't be able to realize what they did wrong and fix it in the future. Um, is that your position? Yeah, I, I, of course it is. I think that um, why bother these these hardworking enforcers with minimal things? Most civilians lie anyway. Most civilians just make stuff up and there's no reason to mess with these cops. They've got other things to do. They're trying to keep their family in line. As we know, 40% of them, it's a tough job for them to keep their family in line. And they've got other things to do. They've got reports to write, gear to purchase. You know, a lot of these cops have to purchase their own protection gear with their own money. And that's that's an atrocity. I mean, when they wanna when they wanna buy more more toys or tools to protect us and they've got to use their own money, that's that's disgusting to me. In fact, that's the bill I would like is that they have a fund. It would have to be billions of dollars, but a fund that we could give our law enforcers to use anytime they need more money. Now, that money could be used for gear. That money could be used to help them with with legal defenses when they are accused, wrongly accused of messing with the public or messing with their own family members. And, you know, it, it'll just help continue our support, our blind support that they deserve from us. And, you know, as we're even talking about this, I think that the um, that the EAA is going to grow and grow and grow. And the more that we can can get support for our enforcers, the better it's going to be. How nice would it be to not have to turn on the news and listen to listen to uh, cops being accused of choking people out until they die? How nice would that be? And I think one of the other things we should do is stop the media from being able to do that. I mean, yeah, it's freedom of speech, but is it freedom of speech when they're trying to start a riot? Okay, I don't yeah. think so. I think it's a danger. And I think too much information and talking negatively about our law enforcement officers is absolutely the wrong thing to do. Okay. And you would be willing to see legislation of that nature. Um, I'm going to probably start writing it after we get finished. Okay. Well, you're pretty serious about that. Um, and that, that kind of brings up something that some people are concerned about, that when a, a police officer is accused of misconduct, it is their own department, other government employees who are on the same team, who uh, are, are the ones that investigate them, and usually they're found to be innocent. Um, well, how, how do you feel about that? I think that the ideology of um, we have in, we have investigated ourselves and found that we have done nothing wrong is absolutely the right way to go about it. But, but how can that be? It, it almost sounds like this. Uh, and again, I don't mean to be offensive, but it seems like so many of the things that you're talking about in this interview are they're, they're almost make me suspect that you're you're putting me on that this is satire. Are, are you serious about these things or? Uh, well, let's you... look at it this way. Do you, when we go to the polls to vote, that's not satire. We're voting seriously. We're seriously deciding who wants to who we want to represent us. When we we then see that we win, right? There's nothing bad about that. And now what we have done is we've established people. We have voted in people that are going to do what we want them to do. They're going to make up laws that maybe keep us home when there's invisible deadly diseases outside they're going to have us shut our businesses for our safety and those enforcers are going to are going to enforce those laws and those are important laws and those are laws that we chose our representatives to put in to effect and now we need to support our enforcers because because they're in effect there's nothing satire about this and I'll tell you what it's a life and death situation those 100 plus cops that were killed that's horrible absolutely horrible i'm not worried about the 1000 plus free civilian Americans that were killed. I'm worried about those cops that were doing their job that were killed. Okay. And it, it is, it is almost a, what is it? A thousand to 100 ratio. Um, that's yeah, it is an interesting statistic. Um, the police officers, some people have been concerned that police officers who are found guilty of doing something that 
a, a civilian would have a very harsh penalty for, they are suspended. And suspended is the big punishment. And uh, then, you know, that you hear these reports of the cops are, are joking around about how happy they are. They got extra vacation days. They're getting paid for their time off. They're going jeeping. They're going to Vegas. Um, is that appropriate? Or don't you feel there is a place for punishment of an employee who does something improperly and, and violates someone's rights? I'm just going to go back to the basics of of what the EAA stands for, and that is to blindly support our enforcers by any means necessary. And if they still need money when when they're being accused, and they're probably being wrongly accused, I mean, most of these people out there deserve it. Most of the people that have force put on them, they deserve it. They were probably in the wrong place at the wrong time, and shame on them. Too bad. And, you know, yeah, once, once they have some time off, uh, whether it's disciplinary or because they're under an investigation or whatever, they should still be paid. I mean, most cops go out and they do buy Jeeps and boats and things like that, but they work so hard, they never have time to use it. So what more can a department do than allow them to continue to be paid so that they can use those toys, go out and have fun while these anti-cop and cop-hating groups decide if, if they've done something wrong? They should absolutely continue to be paid. They deserve it. They've put their lives on the line. They put their families at risk and, and we need to do everything we can to support them. Okay. Um, you don't well, hear much satire in that now, do you? It sounds like you're very serious about what you are saying. Um, and some of the things I find it hard to believe, but uh, uh, one last question, I'm just going to kind of bring in an anecdotal thing. A friend of mine in Texas um, purchased a new Corvette and took it out and was, uh, you know, just kind of having fun driving around, not endangering anyone, and was treated absolutely horribly by the cops, in large part because he was a young person who owned a, a nice car. Um, and it, it kind of permanently, I don't know, uh, gave him a change of attitude. What would you suggest for someone like that to, what should their attitude toward law enforcement be? If they were, if they were treated poorly, how can someone like that change around to being kind of supportive my cops right or wrong my cops how how might i counsel my friend you know i would tell your friend to suck it up buttercup because we've all got to give a little for our freedoms and sometimes things are going to happen that we don't like and we just got to suck it up and so you know the fact that he he had to you know was a little inconvenienced for the rest of this country to be free oh well who knows? He could have been a drug dealer driving a nice sports car and being young. And the cops have to have the ability and the authority to make sure that he's not, because if he was out selling drugs, whew, that could ruin everything in our country. I mean, that could be that could be like the Jenga game, that one piece that comes out and the entire system collapses because he might be out there selling drugs. OK, well. Thank you so much, and uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on and uh, Enforcers Association of America dot org. Um, thank you for sharing some very controversial ideas. Um, I appreciate you being on, and thank you for helping me stimulate my brain and realize that I need to keep this fight going even harder. <laughs>